Hello. Uh, I'm Sam. I'm John Torrens. Hello. Uh, and uh, we run a mega game called Mirror State. And uh, for those of you unfamiliar with mega gaming, basically, if you were to take 50 people, stick them in a room, and combine uh, role playing and board games and a bit of war gaming and some video gaming and the news and the X Files and House of Cards. That's kind of what you end up with. It's a, a full day live event. Uh, we call it the disaster movie mega game, and basically we simulate the end of the world. That sounds about right. And you can play a variety of different roles. So you might be a member of the FBI, you might be in NASA, you can be in a corporation and you're trying to defend the Earth from this global threat, whatever it may be, and it's different every single time, but at the same time, trying to get as much money and power as you possibly can. So everybody has kind of a, an independent agenda. Uh, we run a, a presidential election midway through the game, and for politicians, you know, what they're trying to do to start with is make sure they get re-elected halfway through. Uh, all the time in the background, there might be zombies. Uh, about to start encroaching on US borders, or there might be an alien attack fleet about to arrive, or the Andromeda strain is about to break out, or a corporation is working on a, uh, a new super AI that is about to decide that humanity is a problem rather than a benefit. Uh, the one thing that we don't tell players up front is what are they going to be facing? Because that moment of realization, that moment of Oh, it's zombies. Oh, God. Uh, we've hosed this completely. We should have shut our borders an hour ago. Um, is something that you... One of the things... Well, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to do a bit of this. Rewind. So the, the kind of the poster child for Mega Games right now is a game called Watch the Skies, which if you haven't seen the video footage of, a quick search on that there YouTube will find you uh, uh, Shut Up and Sit Down's full playthrough of the game. And... Uh, they're up against alien invaders and the setup at the start of the game is that the world doesn't know aliens are up there But everybody going into a subsequent game knows that aliens are up there to start with there's no surprise there everyone knows that aliens are coming and There's a big moment in the game where the first country Announces aliens are among us everybody in the world panics uh, but there seems to be a race to do it in every game. People charge ahead to be the first country to announce that the aliens are actually among us. So we wanted to get away with that by basically hiding what the, uh, what the threat is, what the, the main storyline is. And we do that through a variety of methods, John, don't we? Yes, we do. So we have a few people who are deciding what the threat will be and how it plays out. So keeping things secret is a very big deal for us. They're players. And, sorry? I mentioned they're players. They are players. They're not so, us. Yes, exactly. So you get to choose what happens as these particular players. And it's all about sending out information, sending out briefings. So each group, whether it is the FBI or NASA, whichever group uh, the briefing goes to, will get their own particular briefing. So it's all tied together, but it's up to them to work out what is actually happening and what is just a red herring and we will throw in lots of other stuff which sounds as if it's important but which might not be so that's really where the meat of it is it's negotiation stabbing each other in the back it's coercing people and interacting and adding to the fiction we write all these different ideas and events and on the day choose uh, which are going to work the best and what's lovely for us is towards the end of the day We'll get events coming back that we hadn't anticipated that we hadn't designed And so we react to those in a way which makes it as exciting as possible and ultimately at the end of the day the world will end The game stops. And, yeah, and the, that's it. there is no the, the the one thing that we kind of lay out on the first page of the soon to be rewritten manual is uh, It's up to you to decide what winning looks like uh, what winning won't look like is humanity stands proud and the threat is eliminated. No, no, no. This is the disaster movie. Uh, it's all about who survives the, the, what's coming. It's not about we eliminated it in the morning and then drunk tea for the rest of the day. No, that's not, that's not what it's about. It's about the end of the world. The, end, the world is going to end. It's uh, the dignity with which you conduct yourselves through to the end of the world. So... Um, we played uh, the first game, what, four weeks ago? June 6th, yes. Five, 
All right, a month ago. Uh, a month ago. We played the first game a month ago. And uh, throughout the whole of the morning session, people were generally just finding their feet. We didn't get the game moving as fast as, as we were kind of anticipating. I, I expected players to be... Uh, doing some cut and thrust legislation. I want to get that energy bill through the house so that my state can benefit. Nobody got that. And it was because we poorly explained how to do it. What, uh, based on the feedback that we had, what quite a few people didn't get was, you can do whatever you like. There's, there's no, uh, and now I have to play this card. No, it's, it's if you're inhabiting the, the role that you are in that game, uh, if you behave in accordance to that role, you're doing it right. You are doing it, and, and you can do whatever you want. Um, you have objectives that are given to you. I should have a little dangly card here to show exactly what that does. Uh, basically, you, you wear a, a, a big lanyard card that is your player information, and we obfuscate stuff from other players that they shouldn't see, but you get to see stuff that's right to you. But it gives you objectives that will ensure that as a politician, you're going to get re-elected. If you tick these boxes, there's a very high chance that you're going to get back into power. Uh, but no one was really pursuing it. There were a lot of, I mean, don't get me wrong, the game started within two minutes and everybody was, in fact, the game started before the game started. People were queuing to get, up, to get in and the corporations were all outside in, in a little group kind of going, so you're taking aerospace, you say? Well, we'll, we'll be more interested in pharmaceuticals in that case. Uh, they'd already started. Um, the the two media channels we were working, uh, which are Patriot, well, they were, were Patriot Broadcasting, uh, which is Fox News, for, for those who want to draw a parallel, and then the Global News Corporation, who are a bit more like CNN. Uh, so obviously we've got a Republican side and the Democrat side represented. Very, very biased and uh, hated each other from the get-go, in character. <laughs> Uh, there's a lovely picture of the two of them in a cab going home afterwards. But, uh, but they were the, the, the competition between the two was incredible from the get-go, to the point that Patriot actually hacked uh, the, the GNC news feed at one point and started putting spurious stuff out for the yeah, It got quite nasty at that point. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, mad. But, uh, but yeah, so the morning took off a little slowly. We fixed that for the next game. It's going to, it's going to happen much faster because we're going to communicate to people you can't do it wrong. The only way you do it wrong is go, I'm going to launch all the nukes. And you kind of go, well, you don't have the button. Mm. Uh, if you had the button, you could have said that. But you are not the president. He's over there. Um, uh, or she's over there, actually. I mean, we, uh, and one of the things that I've noticed is between uh, Mirror State and, and, and Watch the Skies, so the main Watch the Skies games, is we have a hell of a lot of female players. We have actual women playing our game. No, 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 no. It's not, don't say that's like weird. <laughs> We've got a lot of them. Uh, it's probably 40% of our players are, are, are women. And, and I think it's because we're, we're working to tie into pop culture. And it's not about, uh, you know, you can't have Mulder unless you've got Scully. It, it just doesn't work that way. You know, Castle is the big doofus and uh, Stana Katic is the... Uh, probably spelt said that wrong but uh, but she's the star of the show she's she's the reason that that it makes sense bones is a woman um and and so there's a you know there's a big pop culture kind of swell behind uh you know women actually being way smarter than us hapless dudes and uh, and being the the kind of the minds that drive stuff well forward. and being as ruthless as claire underwood way well, she, yes she's she's the, the only person alive that could keep spacey under control yeah. um but also this other stuff is what well, i find really interesting about it, is having software running underneath the whole thing so, oh that's a segue so again it's the idea that there's a sort of barrier to entry like oh i haven't you know people who hadn't done it before never played anything like this before had come along and had a great time uh, i was just chatting to someone now who's concerned that there'd be they'd need to be technically able to, to play it. Charts and tables and dice none and counters. That, and none of that at all. That is all hidden away. We do all that hard work for you. So as Sam says, as long as you're playing it right, all this cool stuff will happen. And we do crafty stuff like having a barcode scanner for voting. So we're not counting hands. You literally have a big yes, no on the reverse side of your card. And so Zap we, it. It's all completely efficient and recorded correctly. It, it, what that basically means is that we can simulate the entire world in the background. Uh, and... Uh, what, everything you're doing, there will be one of the game masters kind of just going like, 
point to Democrats over on one side, or or like Ohio is nervous uh, in the background, and it, and it will, will change the mood of the of the country behind the scenes. You won't know it's happening, and and, and if you're uh, working in accordance with your character. Uh, you would, and you're acting in, in what you think is the right way. You know, we should send a quarantine team to JFK to make sure that anything coming through the borders isn't going to affect us. Turns out that the planned uh, escalation of viral infection was actually coming in through Florida, and you kind of go, JFK thing does nothing in the slightest. But you're acting in accordance with what you think the right move is. If you saw that, uh, that the antagonist players, the bad guys, were kind of going like, I'm going to push all my markers towards Florida, uh, you would then go, I pull my quarantine marker towards Florida. We make it so that... Uh, that actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about this bit over here, right? And this bit over here is the, is the election. Right, so the presidential election happens midway through the game. Perfect, having a presidential election midway through the game it means you get to mix things up midway through, unsettle the status quo completely. And during the election, uh, we run the election results up on big screens. So as each state gets voted in, it gets announced on the big screen. And uh, what this was happening, we, we kind of stretched that turn out, turn, we'll talk about turns in a minute, but we, we kind of stretched that turn out and um, and what we saw was that at all times, uh, you know, people kind of eating their lunch and staring at the screens. And um, one of the people who blogged about the game afterwards says, it was basically a real election. People were there treating it like the real thing. And that's what we're aiming for is, uh, is the second you, you give the mechanics too much visibility, uh, you remove that fourth wall. You, you get rid of that... Uh, that I'm in the moment layer to it. I mean, even LARP struggles with this. LARP struggles with it unless you're doing, uh, if I actually hit you with the sword, I just hit you with the sword. But then you kind of go, well, how do you do magic? Magic is always complicated. It's always like, you know, I have to throw, throw a beanbag at you or, or something along those lines while len yelling flipendo. Um, that, that's, we wanted to make it so that if you live through the moment, uh, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's no more role-playingly involved than it is playing a game of Battlestar Galactica, uh, where you know, you know you're a Cylon from the get-go, and you are resisting from the very core of your being, going, <laughs> I'm a Cylon. Uh, the bit where you know, you know you are going to just filth them throughout the entire game, and it's going to be beautiful. So we want to make sure that that's the mindset that we get, is, is that feeling of, of actually, look, you know, I'm in control of all of this, and I'm going to just lie completely to the president right now. I am going to horse shit him like you wouldn't believe, uh, so that I can go and get this contract set up with, uh, with these two people so I can get stuff done. Anyway, all, that's what that segue was all about. The presidential election was people seeing it as real, and that's how the gameplay takes place, is it allows people to see things as real. And that ties into the digital world because it means that the digital world behind you is, is doing all the maths. Now, in our, our first game, we missed a couple of tricks on that part. Uh, the first of which being, if we have all that information about what's going on in the country, shouldn't people know about that? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to know that, that actually, you know, you've had zombies for a little while now. Uh, maybe, maybe do something about it. And, We'd, we'd put it out in a, in a verbal fashion, but when it comes down to, if you're the state representative, you'd be receiving a crap load of information from local law enforcement and so forth. Equally, no country lives in a bubble. Even China, who are arguably, well, let's say North Korea, who are, are about as isolated as it's possible for a, uh, a nation to be, um, they'd still be receiving the news from elsewhere in the world. So we're work, we've worked to, to kind of surface all that information more. Opinion polling was a thing that existed in the game. At any point, you could say, like, uh, how am I going to do in the election? You kind of go, like, you're down a little at the moment. You need to make some, some moves in order to make sure you get back in. We had that available, but nobody knew about it. Um, so next time around, the big thing that we're adding, if, uh, for those of you who are familiar, for those of you who are familiar with the game already, uh, digital maps. Ooh, digital maps, lovely. Uh, opinion polling served on a regular basis. Uh, a moderator-controlled news channel that, that serves stuff from across the world. So it won't be breaking news that the media players haven't already had access to. What it will be doing is it will be breaking news that you would be aware of or that a CNN or Fox News would be aware of. 
Oh, that, that, that's a handover. Oh, fantastic. No, so, when I pause sure. for breath, it's your it time to it jump in. Oh, I hadn't read that expression on your face. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can tell we do a podcast. That's, it's a beautiful thing. So that covers that. Actually, just one of the things I was thinking of while you were saying that, and that's what was happening is, uh, and it was something from Watch the Skies, something we'd learned. People were doing uh, covert operations with agents, but of course they had to put their marker on the map, which is not that covert. Um, so what we have, which is really nice, is someone would say, right, we want to investigate that. We need to know about this. And I go, fine. And that, that would live here and live between us. We go, right, this is the, the story as it, as it stands. This yeah, is we what's had... happening. We go, right, that was successful. Uh, that nuclear sub has been lost. Um, you know, that meteorite was shot down, that kind of thing, where it's, you don't have to worry about that. We thought that we had the NSA player who, uh, love him to bits, was a bit of a loose cannon. Um, and ended up being arrested by the FBI and interrogated um, uh, for reasons I won't go into. But um, no, in the morning he was putting wiretaps on all the other agencies. Um, and those really work. That was that. No, oh, the, really the, nice. the wiretaps are beautiful. Most, most beautiful thing where I, I actually had to say, "How are we going to do that?" And I simply go and. Request a briefing from the person who's being tapped. So I go, yeah, come and, come and chat with you. Tell me what you're up to. Yeah. So um, as a game, uh, game master, you go, so NASA, what, what are you working on at the moment? I just want to make sure that I'm fully aligned. I mean, we do that everything. anyway, but in this case, it was it was a tap. So I just had a load of information. I then go and tell the person who's requested the tap, and they could draw on it what they wanted. And it was that worked so well. And, and it so it's actually one of the toughest things about uh, about moderating. Some people call it control. Uh, we've referred to it as moderators in the past, but in the future we're going to call it game masters because that's what they really are. Um, and we is, love Patrick Moore. That's another just a very obscure reference there. Carry on. I'm all about Dominic Diamond. Um, you but, are. Yeah. There, there's very few people who are old enough to actually get these references. You realise that. Um, you've thrown me, you ass. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. And that almost never happens. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, Anyone? I talked about uh, phone taps. Phone taps. No, we will go, no, we went beyond that. He got arrested. Yeah. Uh, you just done the NASA gives us all the information. I then immediately hand it over. You're going to call them game, call them game masters. No, no, that was the segue. I'm yeah. going to call them game masters. Oh, I think it's entirely. Some cool. Ah, no. Okay, got it back. Okay, so yeah, the the single hardest thing, and it doesn't matter whether you're called control or a moderator or a game master or whatever. The single hardest thing for you to do is actually know what the hell's going on in the game. Um, while you will have full ownership of kind of the main thrust of things and every briefing that goes out to an agency or a state or, or whoever uh, will have probably passed through you at one point or passed through the person responsible, knowing that a discussion just happened over here between the Science and Energy Committee and a couple of corporations about setting up a bloody moon base. It happened. Um, you you knew nothing about that, and and you know, and twenty minutes later, some fella will walk up to you, got to go like, uh, so we're going to build a moon base, and you kind of go, where did that come from? <laughs> and, and this was before they, you know, you just kind of go, all right, okay, fine, building a. Moon. A moon base? What the hell? So uh, periodically catching up with players is vital. And I, did, I worked on the, uh, the the big Watch the Skies, the 300 player episode two, uh, Watch the Skies 2 in London. Um, uh, Watch the Skies 3 will probably have happened by the time people see this video, uh, which is equally large. And the, the second Watch the Skies with 300 people was mayhem absolute mayhem. You had between 20 and 40 uh, controllers in there. I, I was looking after the United Nations who ended up being abducted by aliens. Uh, that was a thing. Um, and uh, we needed time to actually talk to other moderators because you, there is no way you can as assimilate the entire game from your small section of it. And so there'll be all kinds of madness going on all over the place that you just don't, won't be aware of. Effectively, your, your role boils down to being, um, uh, you know, overseer of dice rolls. Uh, whereas what we've done is what, well, where we're, we're evolving our, our moderator, tool, uh, moderator role to, and why we call them game masters, is from here on in, we're going to have two people who are responsible for all storyline. Um, and that doesn't mean they're writing it, it means that they're making sure that the information is percolating out to the right players. Because if 
those players don't get information that they should have, that's a stopping point right there. If uh, my, uh, my CDC response team that I sent out to go and investigate uh, a, an outbreak of cholera, for example, if they don't report back in the right amount of time that they should do normally, that means that me as the CDC player, I'm just kind of going, well, what happened to them? Are they, are they dead? Are they alive? If I have to chase a game master to find out, if I have to chase a moderator to find out, that's a stall point in the story. That's a, that's a point that, uh, that the game players had to be interrupted. Um, but basically, the only reason you should come talk to us at any point should be, I'm going to do this. Is that okay? Or I'm going to do this. Here is the cash that is needed in order to make that happen. At which point, we just kind of go, thank you very much. Uh, you will find out in the next 15 minutes exactly what the result of that is. So we, we were moving to kind of entirely digital briefing uh, where anybody with a smartphone will just get a, you know, get a beep beep and they kind of go, oh shit. Uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're hoping for. We want to keep people in the game in the mood mm. all the time. So in fact that interaction may not even happen in the first place. So maybe we get that. No, we want to make sure, because otherwise... Otherwise, it doesn't it doesn't bleed out. So it doesn't matter how many moderators we end up having, how many game masters we end up having. We will have two whose primary responsibility it is to understand what the hell's going on. Uh, it, it's critical. Um, uh, so one of the one of the things that the the threat players did in the last game is is they introduced uh, this cult uh, who were basically just. Uh, anti anti capitalist anti capitalist yeah it started out as a couple of dozen people who were just holding picket lines they ended up smashing up banks and, and doing a bit of terrorism and the players god love them drew a parallel between we've got zombies over here we've got this bunch of people over here they are clearly connected they thought like no they have engineered this thing to bring about the end of the world fantastic that's exactly what we want to see uh, because we were, we then rolled with that, you know. We, yeah. there, there wasn't a, a particular connection, but they kind of go like, "That story is way more fun than the one we had." Uh, let's 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 carry on going with that. It's it's like good D and D, uh, you know. The story you're there as as DM to make sure they have a great time. It's not about you. It's not about your ideas. It's about theirs. It's about it's about making them do all of the mm. the good stuff. We were going to do like a five minute advert and we've ended up just rambling for 25 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think it was pretty good though. Yeah. Anyone got any questions? We've got a couple of minutes. Fire a question. Turn on mic they don't have any questions. Well, the, well, we can repeat the question for the, yeah. for the folks at home. Uh, questions, observations, uh, anything no matter how entertaining you might think it isn't. Um, just, just, for me, I, I, this is, hearing you guys speak is the first time I've encountered this. So, are you, have you got like a huge site that like you run, I mean, a physical site that you run this all along? And no, that's, that's our sticking point, is uh, finding the right location to do it in. So we ran a Watch the Skies in uh, Trumpington, one, like a mile down the road, in a, in a village hall. It was okay. It was okay. You came onto that as well, didn't you? Um, yeah, it was okay. It's a nice enough space. It's not what we want. What we're trying to do is make it so that the space is as much a part of the game as the people. Uh, so that it feels like I could be walking the halls of power here. Uh, and village halls and, and church centres and things like that, they're good spaces that you can get hold of, but they're not quite right. The, the amount of Jesus loves you banners uh, at, at, the first, at the first mirror state, we, that, we came away looking at the video footage because we videoed quite a lot of it. Check it out on YouTube. Search for mirror state mega game. Um, uh, yeah, we videoed quite a lot of it, and uh, and while they're kind of going like, so we're going to deploy our fleet in uh, in the South Pacific, uh, in the expectation that the Iranians are up to no good. Jesus thinks you're ace, right in the back of the shot, and you kind of go, oh man. Not to mention the fact that I referred to the rule book as the Bible right at the start of the game, um, and and then went actually that's inappropriate for these surroundings. So. Uh, at the moment, we take what we can get. We're building up. So basically, the game is designed to work for between we, 20 at the minimum to 100 players. Uh, we've run with just over 50 was our first game. Uh, we're hoping to hit 100 for the next game coming October 3rd. Book now, book now. Um, uh, 
throwing myself by trying to be hilarious. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're trying to hit the 100 uh, for the second game, but if we can, basically the game is designed to work with almost unlimited players. Uh, our goal is to get to 1,000, because every chunk of 100 is another country. Uh, so as soon as we break through the 100 barrier of, of tickets sold, we'll split the number in two, and we'll have, say, 60 as America, and another 60 as Russia. All experiencing the same thing, but then you've got ambassadors coming into play. They're getting different information coming out in a slightly different way, depending on geography and alliances and so on. And it's fundamentally designed to be scalable. It's so. modular, effectively. Yeah. We can stack as many countries as we like, whichever countries we like. I mean, I've just got to create the, do the freaking months of research in order to make it <laughs> at least semi-realistic. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the, but we can bolt as many together as possible, and we want to, we'd love to run a thousand player game. And here's here's one thing for our big plan, right? Here's one thing we're going to do: when we tip over into the two country setup, we'll have a TV studio. So at the moment, we have rolling text news, like you'd get like you get on a, a CNN website, something like that. Uh, more than Twitter. Uh, a bit better than the scrolling you get at the bottom of, a, of the BBC or something like that. But um, yeah, we have rolling news, works really, really well. If we get into the 150 kind of plus player area, we'll have a TV studio, and instead we will have real news running throughout the game. Might not be constant to start with, but we'll, have, uh, we'll, we'll get people in who are used to presenting on screen uh, to actually present stuff. So the media players will be acting as editors uh, and then you'll have it just pop up on the screen. With, and it means that anybody who's actually not there can watch the game happening. They can watch the news as though it was real. Uh, it's, and, but that's where we want to get to. We want to, we want to expand into being, I mean, at the moment, you know, we charge people to play, we have to charge people to play because the rooms aren't free. Uh, and, we, and anything we make over the cost of the hall hire, we're investing in new kit. So, you know, we made, what, 15 quid off Watch the Skies? We bought a barcode scanner. Uh, you know, we, we made about, actually we made a little bit more than that. We made like 50, 60 quid. Woohoo! Out of Mirror State 1. Yeah. And, and we're sinking all of that into uh, better presentation. Uh, I mean, we're both down in the hundreds so far in, in what we've sunk into the game. But our goal is that every time we put on a big game, the next game's going to be even better. But everyone who comes along has had a blast so far, and it will continue to be the case. Yeah. Anyway, uh, search for Mirror State Mega Game in Google and you will find all kinds of crud on the web uh, about what we've got. If you're in the room, come and get a fly. Or come talk to us in person. And, uh, next game, Mirror State Code Epsilon. Code Epsilon. October the 3rd. Yeah.